more, but uh, we're going to show a video uh, of uh, one of the last uh, times the gospel was preached over there, I think, for 2018. And uh, one of the Coliseums that we'll be in, and you'll see that. Uh, maybe a couple of videos, and then after that, a video of a bunch of them that have uh, just been baptized. So we'll share a little bit more about all that, but after that, uh, and Shannon's going to come, and then after that, uh, Steve Reed's going to come and share it. So God bless you, and hope that you enjoyed it, and, and thank you so much for coming.
and I was thinking, okay, so Brother Max asked me to sing this song, God Give Me the Song. So the song is The Commission. So Stephen, whenever you're ready, we'll start. Yes, sir, bring it. 
testimony. Everything I'm sharing with you this morning is what the Lord Jesus did in my heart and my life. He transformed my life. I've never been the same. And I understand, according to the scriptures, there's only one way to be saved. Amen. And that's receiving the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And every one of us has been saved by the grace of God. <coughs> had to hear the message of the gospel. And had to receive it yeah. to be saved. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. I'm not here to take up Brother Ronnie spends his time as he preaches, but he's a, he's a great part of my life. I know me and Vanessa was members at Trace Creek for 13 years, and I was able as a, as a new convert to sit under some good uh, pastors that were uh, good teachers of the Word of God, in which I grow in my faith and all, and He's a great part of that in my life, and I thank you, Brother Ronnie, because God has used you in a mighty way in this area, and He's still using you. But I'll just get right on to where I know it. But we're, we, I want to not take all the time, but I want to share with you about my mission trip <coughs> to Romania in 1993. You know, it's been 30 years ago. Yeah. I have time flies. <laughs> I'm going to give you a quick background uh, of Romania. When I went, I got to go with a missionary that would go behind the Iron Curtain in Germany before the fall of <coughs> communism in 1989 mm. on December 25th in Romania. And they'd go in, and back then, under communism, the church... The body of Christ was there in secret worshiping God mm -hmm. underground. Mm -hmm. In 1989, <coughs> communism failed. I got to go to a country less than three years to where the gospel was able, we were able to take the gospel in. And, and shared the good news of Jesus Christ. So I was there early on. These people, for 42 years in this country, lived in darkness. They had no hope. For 42 years under communism. If you'll study the history of Romania and Eastern Europe, even our president was used by God to have Gorbachev to tear down the wall in Germany in 1989 in November. And you know, as I studied that history, here was the words to Gorbachev from President Reagan. Tear down the wall. And God was using our president in a nation that stood on the word of God back then, that believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ for Gorbachev to turn that wall down. That wall was tore down in 1989 in November, and the fall of communism in Romania was on December the 25th, 1989. Amen. But imagine this morning, <coughs> living in a nation where there was no hope in darkness. President Nikolai Chichescus was one of the most ruthless, wicked, communist dictators in Eastern Europe. You can find all this in the history. I was there with that missionary that in 1981 and Crusades for Christ and Evangelists that was there that day in Bucharest when they revolted against the communism and it fell that day. I was with that evangelist that God called. He was in the military. He pulled his 
He pulled, they pulled their uniforms off and they said no longer and they revolted against communism. I was with these people. I, I was in the villages with the people. We would go into each village. I was in the underground churches. that worship in secret. I preached in these churches. And when you go into these churches, I've seen the bullet holes continually that have spies all across that country and the villages and all that because uh, they would they would take and they'd want to know what the people were doing because the people worked for the parliament of communism. And they existed by working from daylight to dark. And that's the way they lived. And they had no hope. And I saw those bullet holes and I heard the testimonies of those people that their mom and dad and grandpa and grandma were lived here where they was worshiping that. And they'd come in with machine guns and kill every one of them. I want you to think about this. See, I didn't know this until I went over there. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no idea that the body of Christ was in Romania <coughs> worshiping in secret. But I saw that. See, God's chosen the church, the body of Christ, to do the Great Commission. That's right. Yeah. Amen. I would go, we'd go into the villages, and I'll just share with you, uh, as we went for three weeks, we went all across Romania for three weeks. And uh, I noticed so many things. I mean, I noticed uh, how communism had destroyed the country and as far as uh, everything in it. And I noticed the towers all around the borders to where they'd have towers in the military and the people where they could not escape under communism. And we'd go into these villages and, and it was all organized and we'd go into the villages and we'd take and show the Jesus film, Passion of Christ. And they would welcome us there and we'd have a screen just like this guy. Y'all had today. We'd go into that village and, and we'd show uh, the passion of Christ to Jesus family. And immediately I noticed it. everyone would come. The whole village would come. Some villages was like 500, some was 1,000, some was 1,500. But then hear about us coming. And the fields were white for harvest and 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 the and the, and the bell was there, there was light from the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ and, and those that had no hope would come to see this Jesus film. Amen. And boys, I'll never forget that when we when, when we would take it and, and we'd start the film that you could hear a pin drop through the whole field. Everyone would stay. No one would leave. And I noticed the first time that we showed this film in the first village uh, during that time when they come to the park to where they uh, took Jesus and, and they laid his body on the cross and, and they took those nails and it showed him driving those nails in his hands. I'll never forget the people would wail, literally wail and cry and weep. Every one of them of what they saw when many of them had never even seen this before. Many of them have never had a Bible in their own language and we passed over 4,000 Bibles out. But i never forget that, that. That the wailing and the crying and the weeping that I heard when I saw the gospel. Yeah. They said,
singing God's love to the, to the cross. And then we would, after the film, we would take the word of God and we'd show them how they could come and be forgiven for their sins. We'd share with them that's God's love to you. And if you would be willing to, by faith, believe that Christ died for your sins and you'd be willing to ask him to come into your heart and save you. Every one of them would stand up. Every one. I don't mean 99 out of 100. Every one. Everywhere we went was open. Because you know why? They lived in a country that had no hope and darkness. And they found hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We would go into and do that all across the country. And some of the things, it's been 30 years, but things that stood out to me, I'm sharing with you, and I saw it with my own eyes. We'd go into cities and we'd, we'd get permission from uh, the mayor of that city or the orthodox priests, many of them had control of those cities and you had to work through them and we'd get permission to, to rent theaters. And these theaters, some of them would hold 3,000 people. And we'd go into it and we'd get permission and, and, and we'd go pass out flyers in that city uh, for two days and, and then the people would come and let them know they'll be presenting a film of the Passion of Christ. And the whole theater would be filled up. I'll never forget the first one, Mike, that we went to and we did that. They let school out to come to this presentation Amen. of Jesus Christ and the cross. And I'll never forget that when I come in and, and I see this whole theater filled up with people and, and I sat back with the missionary, he told me, he said, I want you to really pay attention to what goes on in this service today. And he told me the things to look for. And it was the same way in that service. You could drop a pen, Cotton, and and... I mean, there was no noise. They, they were watching this film and it come to the point to where they tucked the nails and drove in the hands of my Lord Jesus Christ. There was wailing and weeping and crying. And then we'd give an invitation. And it, he asked me, it was the first time, the first day that we went into, he asked me, he said, Steve, would you be willing to give the invitation. And I said, yes, I would. Here was my invitation to the people that saw that thing. If you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and if you're willing to confess your sins and repent and invite Jesus Christ right now today to come into your heart, would you please stand? Brother Ronnie, everybody in that theater would stay and they would pray and oh, yeah. ask Jesus Christ to come in their heart. But that wasn't all of it. After that service, the first time in that theater, sharing the film of Jesus Christ died on the cross, we was getting ready to leave and and this woman come to my interpreter and she was crying and, and, and all and she was sharing with him and I said, uh, uh, what did she say? What did she say? She wanted to know, listen to this people, she wanted to know if she could buy a box of Bibles. She was a teacher in that town and she wanted to take it and teach the Word of God <coughs> to her kids. I'll tell you what I've done. I gave her two boxes. Amen. 
And she was so thankful. And everywhere across that country that we went, we passed out 4,000 Bibles. And we'd have to get on wagons. And we'd have to get to where the, the crowd wouldn't crush you because uh, so many had did not have a Bible in their own language. And, and, and they would come and, and, and they, would, they would receive the first Bible they ever received in their whole life. And they would take these Bibles and they would kiss them and then hold them up to the Lord, thanking Him Amen. for the Bible yeah. and having a copy of the Amen. Word of God. Amen. I've seen this in all my eyes. <coughs> I'll never forget as we continued to travel across the country. I mean, we was out in, in, in nowhere and, and, and a beautiful country over in Eastern Europe. Beautiful. Romania has beautiful uh, land and beautiful places. And we were out in the middle of nowhere and we come down to this long ravine. And at the bottom of it was a bridge. And they've been having a lot of rain and and so we stopped, and, and one of the uh, missionaries said, we need to look at this bridge and see if it's safe, uh, see if it's not washed out, that we can drive our suburban across it. And we stopped there, and we heard some voices. And it was nothing but a mountainside of brush besides uh, this creek that we were getting ready to cross. And, and I heard those voices. And all of a sudden, two men appeared uh, out of this brush, and they were shepherds. And guess what they were doing? They were trying to find that one lost sheep. Well, you think about that. You know what happened to me when I seen that. Let me tell you something. I come 6,000 miles. You don't think God didn't love them shepherds? What well, was the coincidence right in the middle of nowhere? Two shepherds coming out of a thicket and they were looking for that one lost sheep. <coughs> Me and my tr translator went up to him and he talked to him and was able to take and share the gospel of Jesus Christ to him. And both of those shepherds gave their heart and life to Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Uh, the power of God, the gospel is, and the salvation. Yes. That's important of the gospel. That's what God showed me when I went to a foreign country and did mission work. I seen that the gospel is a message. To those people that had no hope. To those people that lived in darkness. And I seen what the Word of God said. And I knew that when I went. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's the power of God and the salvation. To the Jew first. To the Greek. And to everyone that will believe. Yeah. It helped me. I was being ministered to. God sent me. He told me to go. That's right. I know when I told my wife that God told me to go to Romania and I seen the film there at mid Baptist Bible College. Uh, she stood behind me like she always says. Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah. She's been a wonderful wife. She has supported me in evangelism. We know that we've seen God's hand. We've seen God work. We've had the opportunity to leave alcoholics to the Lord. We've seen what the gospel can do in people's lives. Amen. We know Jesus is alive. Amen. He rose Amen. from the grave. Amen. And we know that it will transform your life. Amen. I think about we went into a gypsy village and this I could share, I could share up here, Brother Mike, for two hours. I, I don't know how long I could say up here what I saw in them two trips over there. But we went into a gypsy village. 
I don't know many of y'all know what I'm talking about. There used to be gypsies in America. I'll never forget my dad. There were some uh, that he, when he pastored Oak Grove that was down on Oaks Road. And I remember as a kid, dad stopping there. They would come uh, through every year and they'd camp on the side of Clark's River. And I remember going with my dad and dad inviting him to come to the church right down the road and sharing the gospel with them. They're beautiful people. It was a beautiful village. They were gypsies. And we went into this village, and it was at least, it, this village was at least over a thousand gypsies. And we would take and do the same thing. We'd go into the village. We'd take flyers. We would go all through that village for two days, and we'd go up to, the, to their homes, and we'd pass these flyers out. Well, they... Uh, the word of them got around that we was there. So I was going up through this this part of this village and I seen a woman as we was going through passing these flowers out to each one of these homes. I seen a woman standing out there and she never moved. She just stood there. And I was watching her ahead of us. She was at least a block away. And as we worked our way up there me and the the evangelist, Romanian evangelist, who was my interpreter, we finally come to her. And he and he talked, they talked, he talked to her. You know why she was there? She said she heard that we was gonna be here. And I know about the cross. And I've heard it before, but I want to know how that I can be saved. Amen. So we was able to talk with her right there and then and take the word of God and we was able to lead her to Jesus Christ. I told Michael about this. And after that she was crying. We gave her a Bible. The same thing, weeping and holding. And she was just wailing and crying and so grateful that we was there and so thankful that she was saved and gave her heart to Jesus Christ. She turned around, Brother Ronnie, and, and this woman was up in age, and she walked as fast as she could walk back to the house. And I was sitting there thinking, what in the world is she doing? She went and got her husband and her kids yeah. and brought them back. She said, tell them, tell them what you told me. Go tell. Go. 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 Keep going. Share the gospel. We was able to lead the other to Jesus Christ. Amen. See, when God called me to do the work of evangelists, I had a burden for the lost. I hadn't been, per I hadn't been perfect. I know I've made mistakes since the call of evangelists. But I've seen people's lives change. Amen. I'm one of them. Amen. You're a product of the Great Commission right here in Vansor Baptist Church. Amen. Brother Ronnie is a product of the Great Commission Amen. that Pastor Trace Creek, what, 47 years? <laughs> Michael is a product of the pastor here and now at the Vanzor Baptist Church yeah. because of the Great Commission. Yeah. God told me to go. I didn't understand everything, Mike, when he told me to go over to Romania. I did not really understand it all, but I knew God called me. Yeah. He said, go. And that's what you're doing. Go. Amen. He calls us all to be saved. He's called the church to take the new converts, those that have been saved, and make disciples. And to go. Right. See, mission starts with the family at home. It starts in the communities. It starts in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Go. 
Is it important to share the gospel? Paul said, if the gospel be here, it's here from them that are lost. You're saved today only because of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, don't. Continue. Never give up. Never stop. Go. Did I have a love for my country when I went to Romania to a foreign mission field? Yes, I did. Let me tell you what God did while I was over there. I'll never forget when I come in, when I come in and we landed in Atlanta and we come through customs, I'll never forget this because this is what happened to me over in Romania. See, I took for granted what God had done in my own country. I saw that in that country. He showed me the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ and he showed me just how he has blessed this nation more than any nation on the face of the earth. Amen. That I had took so many things for granted. Oh, I've got to show this and I'm going to turn over Brother Ronnie. When we went into them homes and we showed these Jesus film, people would invite us into their homes. They had nothing. Nothing. I never for going into this lady that got saved and she invited us to come to her house and we was in there and she was just crying in tears. Her whole family got saved and, and she was sharing with, and we were talking and rejoicing and praising God. And before we left, this was on her table. It's homemade. On her table. And, and they would go and, and they'd take things they had nothing. She wanted to give this to me. To me. Grateful and thankful that we come from America yeah. to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and she was saved. Yeah. Oh, mate, look here. Hey, I'm not going <laughs> to. Everywhere we go, oh, mate, want us to have it. They couldn't give us anything. They didn't have anything worth anything. It's just things they made, how they survived. Look here. They take it off the walls and give it to us. Are these special to me? Yes, they are. Amen. Take it off the wall.
Thank y'all. I love you. You know I love you. You love you, brother.
that I don't love you. Father, Amen. I've already missed you. We're not even going yet. Amen. Brother Ronnie, what a few that will understand what it feels like when you're away from the flock. That you always love them. You always miss them. And you want to be with them. So don't doubt one second. And this man that you call to be here, your pastor, loves you while he's gone. And my wife has prayed more than anybody that I know of. God gave me a praying wife. Some of you, God has turned your life around because of the praying people. Amen. Don't quit praying. Amen. You men that are here, you take care of things. Don't let things get out of whack. There's teachers, there's ordained men all over this place. Brother Robert Chandler, Brother Matt, will be here speaking. Brother Ronnie will be here this Sunday morning, and next Sunday morning, and I'll be back the 19th. Probably with not much to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I love you. Amen. And it's not it's not goodbye. All right. I'll just see you later. Yes, sir. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. And the nurse that worked on those gave her shots and did all this explanation. I'll, I'll never forget what she said to me. And why she said to me and nobody else, I have no clue. <laughs> she said, What are you gonna do if you don't make it? I said, Lady, I know what I'm gonna He's not. I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. yeah. As we said the other day, all I got to do is be able to run, outrun Hal Ryder. Right. <laughs> that won't be a problem. That won't be no problem. <laughs> Amen. If I can run in whatever the hippos, gators, and dogs, and whatever, hyenas, leopards, they ain't that big fish in him for a little while, and I'll take this shit. <laughs> but I love it. Thank you for coming. Some of you came out early today that don't come for Sunday school. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> Amen. Come and get in the Word. I promise you, you'll grow. Yes. In the Lord. Yes. So God bless you all. And uh, whatever we're going to do here. Well, so since you're going to be here for all the service, I think the appropriate thing we do is we're going to pray over you at the end of the service. Okay. And we'll walk to the well, please. Yeah. It's my honor and my son. Amen. My second Lord, I'm proud of you. Amen. 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 I'm getting there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't make it without my sister. Amen. <laughs> I love you, son. I love so many of you all. So God bless you all. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, well, since he's going to be here preaching anyway, Ronnie, dismiss this part of the service. You all go around and greet each other and win the. Uh, just a few more minutes, we'll come back together, and uh, we'll continue on the service. A lot of folks have come in since we started. We want to make sure everybody knows they're welcome, and that God loves them. So, Brother Ron, if you don't mind uh, ending this part of the service, I appreciate it. Father, well, Lord, we come to you today. We've been blessed and challenged and inspired and moved in our own spirit. Dear God, we understand the longer we live, what the psalmist said, and what he meant when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. God, there's nothing that's precious and wonderful. It's encouraging. It's going down to God's house. And God, I pray you give Brother Mike as he goes on the mission trip. Lord, you open doors of opportunity and bless the word of God as he goes out. You always do. May you bless his family and his friends and this good church in a special, special way. In Christ's name, yes. Amen. 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 Amen.